Calculating Greenhouse Gas Emissions In order to make meaningful comparisons, it is imperative to quantify transportation emissions and establish a baseline. Through a series of simple calculations and conversions, you can see your current level of emissions and gauge where you want to be. There are three basic steps in any greenhouse gas calculation. One, aggregate activity data. Two, multiply by an emission factor. Three, convert to desired units. The best way to consider this procedure is by example. A company has a fleet that consumed 450,000 gallons of gasoline last year. What quantity of CO2 was emitted in metric tons? The pertinent activity data is 450,000 gallons of gasoline. The emission factor is 19.4 pounds CO2 per gallon of gasoline. And we use a conversion factor of 2,204.6 pounds in any metric ton. You simply multiply the amount of gasoline times the emission factor and divide by 2,204.6 to arrive at 3,960 metric tons of CO2 emitted this year. What changes are necessary if you're told this is an all-diesel fleet? The only difference would be a change in the requisite emission factor. The activity data remains 450,000 gallons of fuel diesel this time, but the emission factor is now 22.2 pounds CO2 per gallon of diesel. You simply multiply 450,000 times 22.2 and divide by 2,204.6 to arrive at 4,531 metric tons of CO2 emitted this year. One of the most important things to note about calculating greenhouse gas emissions is that collecting activity data will most likely be the most difficult and time-consuming part of the task. Collecting receipts, invoices, mileage logs, and fuel consumption tables can be quite an undertaking so it is important to design a system which tracks the individual records precisely. Another interesting concept pertaining to fuel use is energy equivalency. We know that when dispensing liquid fuels, the volume is typically given in gallons. But is a gallon of diesel providing the same amount of energy as a gallon of gasoline? The quick answer is no, but the reason has to do primarily with the chemical composition of the fuels. Gasoline is a mixture of hydrocarbons, organic molecules made up of hydrogen and carbon, of varying lengths, within the range of 6 to 10 atoms per molecule. Diesel is also a mixture of hydrocarbons with slightly longer molecules, typically ranging from 8 to 20 carbon atoms each. Each chemical bond contains energy, which is released in the process of breaking and forming a new molecule. The energy contained in a gallon of gasoline contains between 112,000 and 125,000 BTU, British thermal units, whereas the same volume of diesel fuel nets between 130,000 and 139,000 BTU. For comparison, a gallon of ethanol contains approximately 
76,000 BTUs of energy. The practical matter of this is that a given volume, a gas tank, for example, filled with ethanol would contain less energy than the same volume filled with gasoline. Another way to look at it is that for each gallon of gasoline, you would need 1.6 gallons of ethanol to contain the energetic equivalent. It is equally appropriate to say that for each gallon of diesel, you would need 1.1 gallons of gasoline to contain the energetic equivalent. Even though a gallon of ethanol contains 63% of the energy in one gallon of gasoline, it is not necessarily true that you would get 63% of the range with the gasoline engine by filling your tank with pure ethanol. This is because gasoline engines are tuned specifically to combust gasoline. A fuel with different properties would not combust optimally. It is, however, borne out empirically that a flex fuel vehicle that fills up with E85, a fuel that contains 85% ethanol and 15% gasoline, will get lower gas mileage than the same vehicle filled with conventional gasoline. Please, let it be noted that we do not encourage you to fill your gasoline vehicle with diesel fuel to get better gas mileage.